Hello all, this is Mr. Panza. Just wanted to help you out with using bar models. For many of us, this is a brand new concept, so I wanted to show you how to help your student figure out how to set up an answer to a question by using a bar model to help tonight with division. Our main question has been, how do we use these bar models specifically to help us divide? The homework tonight, one question, that's it. But there's a couple really important things that the students typically maybe make mistakes on. And one is locating the question and answering that exact question. Sometimes after all of the setup, we make easy, simple mistakes. Now I'm going to show you how to set everything up, but the rest is going to be on the student. So the first thing I need to do is read the question and understand the question. I'm going to underline and circle the most important information that's going to help me answer this question. And I'm going to understand what the question is asking me by underlining it and knowing which question I'm answering. So I have Billy Bob here. Good old Billy Bob. He has six times as many cows as Reba Joe. Don't ask me why these individuals have cows. I just don't know. In all, they have 1,610. And the question, and I always have them really box this in because it's the question that eventually they're going to go back and see if they actually answered was, how many more cows does Billy Bob have than Reba Joe? Well, to set up a bar model, I need to think about these two individual characters. I have Billy Bob, and I have Reba Joe. And I'm going to represent how many cows these two individuals have by using a bar model. So the first thing I know is that Billy Bob has six times as many as Reba Joe. So they're both going to get bars. However, Billy Bob's bar is going to be much bigger than Reba Joe's. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So here's Billy Bob. I'm going to give him a really long bar because keep in mind he has six times as many as Reba Joe. So Reba Joe's bar isn't going to look like this. It's actually going to be six times less, approximately this size. Now the other thing I need to do is I need to know how much they have in all. So I'm going to create a bracket. Many of the students are calling this a mustache, which I must say was not mine. It was given to me by another teacher and passed to me from a student. Their total is 1,610. I do not know how much Billy Bob has. I do not know how much Reba Joe has, but I know in all they have 1,610. What I need to do is figure out what I am going to divide this number by. Well, the way you do that is you're going to separate Billy Bob's bar into six equal bars because he has six times as many as Reba Joe. So here's one and two. And these are somewhat equal. This is not drawn to scale, but I try and make it as equal as possible. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. You may be wondering why I got that. Well, it's because Billy Bob here has six times as many as Reba Joe. And what the students are going to be able to do now is understand that Billy Bob has one, two, three, four, five, six bars that represent the total number of cows that he have, and Reba Joe just has one. So now you can take this number here, and you are actually going to divide it by the total number of bars in this problem. So it's not 6, it's not 1, it's 6 plus 1, which is 7. So tonight, the students are going to divide this number, and their answer should equally separate into the 7 different boxes. And once they have that, they need to go back to the question and see what it's asking you. Because the answer to the division, 1,610 divided by 7, is not the answer to the question, how many more cows does Billy Bob have than Reba Joe? So make sure the students answer that question. I know this is just an introduction to bar models, but I hope it helps you out tonight. And I'll continue to post different bar models ex examples as we go throughout the year. Thanks so much for stopping by and for all your support.